We welcome you back to the Georgia Dome in Atlanta. Let's check in downstairs with our Jamie Erdahl. Jamie. Greg, thank you. Good news for the Chiefs linebacking core today as both Justin Houston and Dee Ford are in and active for this lineup. They were both questionable to come in. Houston was dealing with a shoulder and Ford was dealing with a hamstring. Quarterback Alex Smith told us his team is going to have to bottle their emotional energy from that huge overtime win against Denver last week. Against the Falcons, though, Smith is going to have to deal with his offense without wide receiver Jeremy Macklin today. Jamie, thank you. Yeah, Trent, you and I were talking about what a football game that was to win for the Kansas City Chiefs out in Denver. There's Andy Reid in his fourth year as the head man of the Kansas City Chiefs. And on the other side of the field is Dan Quinn in his second year here in Atlanta. The Chiefs have won the toss and they will defer, which means the Chiefs are set to kick it away to the Falcons. And Eric Weems is deep and we are underway. Returnable from about the yard and a half out. We lasso just shy of the 20-yard line. Demetrius Harris, a tight end, making the tackle. And Atlanta quarterback Matt Ryan having an outstanding year throwing the football. 26 touchdown passes, six picks, and his 3,516 passing yards, Trent, third most in the National Football League. He's playing very well, and, and we talked to him about his relationship with Kyle Shanahan. And a year ago, there was so much made about it because the offense wasn't clicking on all cylinders. Now the two are on the same page. Which is always good. Ryan will throw right off the bat. Quick slant is complete. Across the 25, out to the 30-yard line, and a first down, Julio Jones. Up front for Atlanta to a man. The Falcons credit the arrival of veteran center Alex Mack for a more solid offensive line. And the offense has the explosive Julio Jones. You just saw him. His 1,150 yards receiving, the most in the league here in Week 13. Devontae Freeman in the backfield. Behind Ryan. And a quick pass, and that's Jones again. And Jones bouncing off tacklers across the 45, out to the 46-yard line. Well, that's what you get with a big receiver. Just run a quick slant to him. He ran one to the left out of the slot, this time isolated by himself on the backside with Marcus Peters. Marcus Peters decides to go off in coverage, get the ball quickly to Julio Jones, and he does the rest as quietly confident a ball player as you can possibly imagine. And he had a wry little smile after he would have those comments, didn't he? Ryan to throw, almost tripped and fell, breaks himself, Jones again over the middle, inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. It is the Matt Jones, or Matt Ryan, Julio Jones show. I tell you what, three plays and three completions the Chiefs are going to have to change some things up. Coming into this game, we were talking, Greg, would they follow him around? Would they match him up with Marcus Peters and have him go side to side? So far, they haven't done that. They may need to rethink that if Julio Jones is going to continue to have this type of day. This is Devontae Freeman. Freeman running room, left side. Breaking tackles close to another first down at the 27-yard line. The Chiefs having to deal with plenty of injuries on defense. Defensive end Jay Howard now gone to IR. Rakeem Nunez Rochas starts at linebacker D Ford. His 10 sacks starting despite the hamstring and Steven Nelson on the corner. This is Freeman again. Reverses field inside the 25 to the 23. And right now, this Atlanta offense looks like it can do no wrong. Well, and this is the problem with the Chiefs defensively. And when I talked to Bob Sutton, he said, listen, we know that we don't have the best numbers from a total defense standpoint. Teams have been able to move the ball, but they're good in the red zone. They're fifth in the National Football League in red zone defense. And they also are good at creating turnovers. So those are the two things they've had to lean on this season. Another Atlanta first down. Ryan with time throwing underneath. That's Freeman out of the backfield, and he's close to the 10-yard line. Well, you're going to have good protection if you're Matt Ryan if you throw a lot of these quick crossing routes that they've been able to do. First, they hit the slants to Julio Jones on both sides of the field. This time, Freeman has the check down working from outside in. You can see Ryan with his eyes up the field, then got the ball quickly to Freeman. Coming into this week, this Chiefs defense ranks number 20 in the league against the pass, number 29 against the run. First down. 
Ryan. Going to the far side. Taylor Gabriel to the five. Still on his feet. Goes to the end zone. A penalty marker is thrown. That's going to be a face mask on the Chiefs, but Taylor Gabriel, as we hear from the official. Holding, number 70, offense, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Wow, Jake Matthews, wow. the left tackle. Yeah, I thought that was going to be a, a face mask. It looked like it, we're on the other side of the field, but Matthews out in space. You'll see down here on the right, that's where the holding's going to come in. Here there's a face mask there, but not called by Rameek Wilson. There's the hold out front. And then Gabriel sets sail for the end zone, but you're right, he appeared to have been wrapped up right around the helmet. Well, Taylor Gabriel has been explosive for the Atlanta Falcons here the last few weeks. He scored touchdowns in four consecutive games, providing some balance away from Julio Jones. This is Tevin Coleman. Trying to turn the corner, bumped out of bounds at the 20-yard line by Justin Houston. So Justin Houston, we've been talking about him all week, Trent. He, he just, he's not supposed to be here. Well, when you think of the knee surgery he had and how quickly he was able to come off of it, not only to come off of it as quickly as he did, but also to be able to be as explosive as he was a week ago in Denver. And then this week, nursing that shoulder injury, didn't practice a couple days this week. But as you can see, he's out on the field. Coleman still in the backfield, second and 19. Ryan under pressure, got rid of it over the middle and complete. Jones made the catch and he is down at about the 11 or that 12 yard line. Falcons have had a lot of success with the drag routes, with the crossing routes underneath. This time Julio Jones will be coming from the left, that left slot. You see Matt Ryan taking a hit as he's throwing the ball. Almost a little sidearm thing, wraps it right around the offensive lineman's helmet for another first down for Atlanta. Third and 11. They can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Ryan going for the end zone incomplete. Fans look for a flag and they get one. Austin Hooper, the intended receiver, and Daniel Sorensen is the one who hit him at the goal line. Pass interference, number 49. Defense, the foul occurred in the end zone, will place the ball at the one yard line. First down. It's gonna be the right hand of Sorensen that wraps around the waist. That's where the penalty is gonna come in and there's that first down, Greg. <laughs> We're always generous in December, <laughs> always. First and goal. Devontae ah! Freeman, the deep back. Freeman, touchdown! Excellent job by the offensive line of the Falcons. Matt Ryan was very complimentary of them yesterday. Just how the continuity of this group it looks like it's going to the left, and then they end up pulling around and running it over the right side and uncontested into the end zone. Devontae Freeman's sixth rushing touchdown of the season. Matt Bryant for the extra point. He has only missed one all year, and that one is perfect right down the pipe. Impressive opening drive by the Atlanta Falcons. Culminates in the touchdown by Devontae Freeman. 10-0-2 to play in the first quarter. And the Falcons up by a touchdown. What an opening drive performance by the Atlanta offense. Nine plays, 81 yards in just under five minutes. Devontae Freeman touchdown as the Falcons up 7-0. DeAnthony Thomas is deep for Kansas City, which now, which will now look to find a way to answer. Well, the thing that jumped out to me, Greg, was how sharp Matt Ryan was on that opening drive. Thomas at the three. Gets out of a hole to the 15-yard line and is out of bounds across the 25. Great job by DeAnthony Thomas.
And there is Alex Smith, Chiefs quarterback. Ten passing touchdowns. He's rushed for an additional two, only four picks. Trent, in almost 350 attempts, you've called him efficient. I see him also as patient. There are a lot of ways you can describe what Alex Smith does. That's a good way also. Is he is very patient, and you mentioned the two rushing touchdowns. He's very athletic in terms of his ability to get outside the pocket. He's a dual-threat quarterback. He doesn't get enough credit for that. City will operate from the 28-yard line. Fake the pass to give to Tyreek Hill around the right side. He has a first down and then some. Some trickery right out of the gate with the first play. They're going to come out and act like they're going to run that quick screen over to the left. And instead, they give it to Tyreek Hill on the around and able to pick up the first down. 13 yards on the play. Gee, this doesn't feel like it's going to be an offensive <laughs> matchup today, does it? Well, based on what the Falcons did in their first drive, the Chiefs are going to have to keep pace with them today. Kansas City at its own 41. Fake it to where? Alex Smith with time and throwing it. It is a high caught by Travis Kelsey. The Chiefs taking a little something out of the Atlanta playbook, going max protection, play action pass. They leave six guys in to block, give Alex Smith all kinds of time, and he's able to find that window in between the linebacker and corner. Travis Kelsey with a tremendous catch, climbing the ladder to fingertip catch it. We were talking with Travis Kelsey about that very way Tony Gonzalez used to catch the ball. That was very similar, that catch. 21-yard pickup, and another first down for the Chiefs. From the 38, Smith going to go down the sideline for Kelsey. He's got him, and he is reaching for the end zone. He's going to be marked out of bounds at about the three. You get Kelsey matched up one-on-one -on, -one on the outside against Keanu Neal, the rookie. We had a chance to talk to Neal yesterday, and or two days ago, and he was saying that this is going to be a matchup. He knows they're going to try and push the ball down the field to Kelsey as you see him step out at the three-yard line before getting in the end zone. 35 yards on that play. First and goal. Where? To the five, to the end zone, touchdown! The first touchdown on an opening drive this season for the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, it's very timely, Greg. They needed it with the way the Falcons looked on their opening drive. It's going to be a nice misdirection. It gets everybody thinking they're going out to the right. Yet Travis Kelsey split out wide. Yet three receivers to the outside. Instead, they take off on the run, the sweep to the left. Ware bouncing it at first, but able to use his speed and get in the corner of the end zone. Spencer Ware with his third rushing touchdown of the season. I like how they mixed it up on that series, Greg. There was a little bit of everything in their fake screens and arounds. They had one-on-one -on, -one on the outside to Kelsey. Good mix-up by Andy Reid. Cairo Santos for the extra point. And blocked at the line of scrimmage, and it comes up short. Looks like Robinson Therese is getting the credit for the block. But that appeared to be Rashid Hageman. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. McDonald's. I'm loving it. And by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Trent asking if we had rented Finding Dory for the crew. <laughs> no, that's the uh, Georgia Aquarium here in Atlanta. Largest aquarium in the Western Hemisphere. More than 10 million gallons of fresh and marine water. It's like a neat place. It does. Looks like a lot of fun. And that's what we're having here today. <laughs> <laughs> I would wager that was a whale shark. That's my guess. This will not be returned by Eric Weems as he holds on to it in the end zone. And here comes Matt Ryan. And, uh, you know, we've been talking, we've been singing his praises since in the pregame. 
Is he an MVP candidate? I think he is. I think you have to have him in that discussion. He's completing 69% of his passes. He's third in the league in yardage, and you can see here first in yards per attempt. He starts off that first drive, 6-6 six of six for 67 yards. So not only with Julio Jones spreading the ball around, but he's got several weapons at his disposal. He's taking full, full advantage of it. So from the 25-yard line, that Atlanta offense goes back to work. Kevin Coleman starts this series in the back. He gets the pitch, left side, cuts it inside, and has room to run. Across the 30, out to about the 38-yard line. It'll be second and two after a pickup of eight, brought down by Derek Johnson. Well, the Chiefs have told us they didn't plan on moving Marcus Peters around wherever Julio Jones went, and they didn't do it that first series, and I was just checking out. They had they were matched up that uh, that first play, but the second play, Marcus Peters stayed on his normal side of the field. Movement on the far side of the field and contact, and penalty markers fly. Walt Coleman is our referee today. Neutral zone infraction, number 99, defense, five-yard penalty. First down. That is Raheem Nunez Roaches, the second year D lineman out of Southern Miss. The left side of your screen there, you see a move. I go! On first down, deep drop this time for Ryan, and he's gonna go deep down the middle of the field for Julio Jones! And he was interfered with at the 20 yard line. Well, and that's what Matt Ryan was talking to us about with Julio Jones. He has the speed. He, he just has the ability to adjust to the football. So Matt Ryan threw that about as, as high as he did far. Awful lot of error <laughs> to that. Pass interference, number 29, defense. Ball we played from the spot of the foul. First down. Matt was telling us that Julio just has a unique ability to judge the ball in the air and make the acceleration necessary to go get it. He can't remember ever overthrowing Julio Jones because he said he makes that type of adjustment on the football up in the air. That penalty cost the Chiefs 40 yards, and it is an Atlanta first down at the 23. Ryan, under pressure. Penalty marker is thrown. He gets away and throws it incomplete. <laughs> Several penalty markers are down. Maybe holding on both sides. How'd Matt Ryan get out of there? <laughs> oh, it looks like a face mask coming through there. Chris Jones. Maybe two penalties on the Chiefs defense, a face mask and a holding penalty. But Matt Ryan, he's, I thought he was going to take off and run. They were in man-to-man -man coverage. There are two fouls on the defense. Holding, number 20, that penalties decline. Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense. That 15-yard penalty will be accepted. Half the distance to the goal, first down. So the penalty that's accepted is on defensive end, Chris Jones. And he's guilty of roughing the passer right here. Well, you can see why I thought he grabbed the face mask, but I guess it's roughing the passer when you go to the head of the quarterback. See the holding penalty at the, on the left of the screen against Nelson. So Atlanta has run 11 offensive plays. They have 10 first downs, four of them by penalty. Coleman, right up the middle to about the six where Derek Johnson makes the tackle. The Falcons have the luxury of rotating their backs. Tevin Coleman and Devontae Freeman both share the load back there. Freeman getting more of the carries. Coleman more of the pass catcher. But as you can see, he can run the football as well. Coming up on 6.45 to play in what has been a racetrack of a football <laughs> game so far. On second and five, Coleman to about the three. And looks to be maybe about a yard or so short of a first down. 
Well, and that affects the play calling, Greg. When you know you can get a first down, when you know you can keep moving it towards the goal, you don't have to take that chance and try and push it in the end zone. You can It opens up the playbook in terms of what you can call here. Based, okay. on, based on how successful Atlanta is with the play action pass, you would think it would be a play action pass here, but... Well, and you get the you get the feeling early on Kyle Shanahan can call just about anything. Everything's been working. Third and two. Won't be a play action with nobody in the backfield, but you can see they got Julio Jones in motion. Ryan pulls it down. Dodges one tackler. Can't dodge Justin Houston. Lost yardage back to the five. And on comes the field goal unit. Well, good initial pressure collapses that pocket. Matt Ryan has to drop his head and move up in the pocket, and it's Justin Houston that continues to go after him and ultimately comes up with the sack. It's four sacks for Justin Houston on the season. Last couple of weeks, actually. 22-yard field goal attempt by Matt Bryant is good. And with 5-11 to play in the first. Andy Reid's guys pull the Falcons up short of the end zone, but expand their lead to 10-6. Hey, what makes Monday TV's best night of comedy? Kevin can wait. Man with a plan. Two broke girls in the Big Bang Theory tomorrow, starting at 8, 7 central, only CBS. 5-11 to play in a very active offensive first quarter. That's a nice way to put it. it, is, it's, it? it was a very active first quarter so far. Neither quarterback thrown an incompletion yet. From the one yard line to Anthony Thomas. And Thomas finds a little running room across the 20 out to about the 24 yard line. Brought down by Eric Weems. Up front for these Chiefs, Cleveland couldn't see re-signing tackle Mitchell Schwartz. The Chiefs gladly scooped him up. And wide receiver Jeremy Macklin didn't even make the trip with a groin injury. That puts even more pressure on the Pro Bowl tight end today, Travis Kelsey, Kansas City's leading receiver. changing direction and out to about the 30, maybe just short of the 31-yard line. The veteran on defense for the Falcons is Jonathan Fabino, now in his 12th year out of the University of Iowa. At linebacker, two rookies in Campbell and Jones and second-year linebacker Vic Beasley, who has nine and a half sacks. And Atlanta has a terrific rookie in safety, Keanu Neal. Their first-round draft pick is the Falcons' leading tackler. Second and two. Give on the end coming around is DeAnthony Thomas with running room across midfield and into Atlanta territory. Knocked out at about the 46-yard line by Ricardo Allen. Well, the Chiefs showed great creativity in that opening series with the number of different calls that they made. I wondered if they were going to do it this series. They come out in the first play and just your traditional handoff off tackle, that time with the around to DeAnthony Thomas with the big gainer. Might not be the right time to ask you this, but you know, can, a, can a missed extra point be a downer for an offense? It, it can be. It can, it can change the emotion of the game, the, the momentum of the game, but as you can see, the reaction this offense is, ever since the end of the Denver game last week, they've really been clicking. Smith to throw on first down, sideline and incomplete. Tyreek Hill, the nearest receiver, it'll be second and 10. the first incompletion of the day. Yeah, both quarterbacks playing very efficiently. You see those 56 yards for Alex Smith, all 56 caught by Travis Kelsey. Julio Jones not doing too badly on his side either, with 52 yards receiving so far. Second and ten, and this is Ware trying the right side, finding some running room. 
pushes it inside the 40 to the 39. That'll leave him with a third and about three. Chiefs offensive offensive line doing a good job. Ja Reed came in as the extra tight end. He's one of their backup tackles. He came in. That's the second time I've seen him in the game where they go big personnel. He comes in at tight end. That's where they ran. It was right behind the right side. You can see he's out of the game right now as we have third and three. Char Kendrick West comes in for the first time today in the Kansas City backfield. Escapes the pressure. Penalty marker is thrown. He's hit from behind, and the ball is loose. The pileup is at the 44-yard line. Falcons think they have it. Vic Beasley administered the hit to Alex Smith. Atlanta football. Let's check the penalty marker. I think it's going to be holding on the Chiefs as you see both teams leaving the field. Grady Jarrett recovered the fumble. Here's Walt Coleman. Holding, number 71, offense. That penalty is declined. First down and run. That's right tackle Mitchell Schwartz. Well, Alex Smith was fortunate to get away from the pass rush the first time, able to escape. Lucky he's not hurt there as you start to throw. Beasley gets him from behind and forces the fumble. NFL on CBS is sponsored by Dodge. Domestic, not domesticated. And by FedEx, helping small businesses simplify e-commerce. Oh, the time-honored tradition of tailgating here in Atlanta. Now, Jeff Rice is the umpire right number 44. You think it's easy being an official? Look at him. He's getting, he's seeing the players having so much fun. He's like, who wants to get down in the pile? Look at him. <laughs> On the snap, Matt Ryan, sideline, incomplete, intended for Julio Jones. Yeah, Jeff Rice got off of that pile thinking, you know, this. I bet this was a good idea at the time. <laughs> he thought it was a good idea. Then as he his hat came off and he's rolling around on the ground. Good for you, Jeff. <laughs> Second and ten. The screen for Devontae Freeman. Freeman, midfield, 45. One. And he kicked it in gear about what? Right around midfield. Brought down at the 41, and it's a first down. See him look over to the sideline and he's saying, feed me, keep giving me the ball. Watch the acceleration you were just talking about, Greg. Right there, he planted his foot in the ground and just took off, able to get past the first. Right here, he's looking, he's vision, he's patient. Then all of a sudden, when he sees that crease, he's able to go get it. The slant, once again, and that is complete inside the 30. This time, Aldrich Robinson. Talk about your keys to this game, Trent. Well, there's been so much action going on. we got to get these in. So for Kansas City, it's taking the ball away. They lead the National Football League in takeaways and then red zone touchdowns. They can't settle for field goals. they got to be able to keep pace. Ryan, deep drop. Lots of time. Throws over the middle. That's Freeman. Freeman to about the 21. Well, and the Falcons in the uh, hurry-up, up-tempo offense are going to squeeze in the second part of the keys. Protect Matt Ryan. If you give him time, he can spread the football around. And then defensively, as we've already seen today, you got to contain Travis Kelsey. How about a defensive? How about a key to, to, to the game? Uh, somebody make a stop on defense. <laughs> this is Freeman. Freeman works his way inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line, and we get a late flag thrown. Matt Ryan looking optimistic. Illegal use of hands, hands to the face, number 94, defense. Five yards is added on to the end of the play. First down. That's Jarvis Jenkins. Yeah, you see him right there against Levitri, 67. 
has that left hand up in his face mask. So it's a first down now at the 18, or make it the 13 yard line. Pitch for Freeman. Freeman dodges a tackler and ducks inside the 10 to about the 9. Boy, is he quick. <laughs> Jarvis Jenkins thought he had him in the backfield for a tackle for loss, and Freeman just gave him that quick little juke and just grabbing it air at that point. Five Kansas City penalties worth 72 yards so far. And we still have 35 seconds to play here in the first quarter. And we have a late flag, and this is going to be against the Chiefs. Too many men on the field? 12 men on the field, defense with the offense in formation. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Well, it's been very unlike an Andy Reid team or the Kansas City Chiefs for that matter. They usually don't beat themselves, but with the turnover, you can see 12 guys on the field. Going to try running a guy off late. They don't get him off the field in time. The officials recognize it, but you see the six penalties for 77 yards, the turnover around midfield. Very unlike an Andy Reid team. They will not try to get a snap off before the first quarter expires. What an entertaining 15 minutes it was. We have three more of those to go. End of one here in Atlanta. Falcons lead at 10-6. We're watching the NFL on CBS. Back in Atlanta, Georgia. Greg Gumbel, Trent Green, Jamie Erdahl as we get set to start the second quarter. What a first quarter it was for those Atlanta Falcons on offense. 14 first downs in the first quarter. That's more than any other NFL team has had in the first quarter this year. From the three. Freeman. To the right side, maybe a yard if they're generous with the spot. Well, and that spot will determine whether they get a first and goal or not. Pretty close to the change, it looks. And they're giving it to him. Yep. So it will be first and goal. Ball just outside the two-yard line. Freeman still in the backfield. Ryan got rid of it under pressure. That was Chris Jones in on the Atlanta quarterback. Well, they're trying to get a, a shuffle pass underneath. You see 12 Sanu there trying to get behind the line. Ryan trying to bait him in with a half roll and flip it back, but Jones not allowing him to be patient with that. Had to throw it in the ground. Atlanta with 140 yards in total offense so far. On second and goal, this is Freeman, and Freeman not going anywhere. In fact, going to lose yardage. Back to the four. So it'll be third and goal. I wouldn't be surprised here. The Chiefs have gone press man the last two down, stacking everybody inside that box where the tight end area is and I'm surprised I kept thinking they're gonna throw one of those fades they got 6-3 receiver on one side 6-2 on the other Julio Jones one-on-one -on -one up top here with Marcus Peters Let's see what Kyle Shanahan has in mind for Matt Ryan Ryan over the middle incomplete and a flag is thrown on the near side of the end zone. Terrence Mitchell was on Justin Hardy. There's no foul on the play for illegal contact. Fourth down. 
So that will put the field goal unit on the, on the field. You see Dantari Poe coming through. Tried flopping it a little bit, tried drawing the flag. Dantari is 346 <laughs> pounds. <laughs> Can you really flop yeah, you, under you, that being pushed? Well, you saw how he kicked his arms and legs up in the air. He yeah, tried, but I would he tried, too. He tried dramatizing a little bit. But yeah, 346 is a lot to little push in the chest. Matt Bryant from 22 yards out, and it is good. 13-25 to play in the first half, and Atlanta stretches its lead to 13 to 6. We're back after this. Just under 13 and a half to play here in the Georgia Dome. 13-6, Falcons leading Kansas City. And it has been a pretty efficient offense on both sides of the field, but especially Atlanta. Yeah, Atlanta performing very well, and some of that's being helped off by the penalty yards that Kansas City has given them as well. The Anthony Thomas with... Run it out of there. Got blockers. And penalty markers fly, and he barely makes it back to the 15, maybe the 16-yard line. This flag thrown in the middle of the field. Holding, number 57, offense, half the distance to the goal, first down. That penalty is on DJ Alexander. Let's talk about what an offensive first quarter that was. Well, first Freeman gets into the end zone for the Falcons and then Ware for the Chiefs, but the Chiefs on their extra point, it gets blocked. That's what gives them their six points. And then Alex Smith trying to move around in the pocket, takes a hit with the ball coming loose. Atlanta recovers, is able to go down and get a field goal out of that. And then, of course, here at the start of the second quarter, Atlanta added a field goal. Meanwhile, yet another Kansas City penalty, and the Chiefs are starting from inside their own 10-yard line. That quick pass is complete to Tyreek Hill, and Hill with a head of steam out across the 20-yard line. Looks like he felt like he could have had more. You see how he just jumps through those creases? His speed, watch when he catches this ball. He goes to get upfield, and then he, he sees a slight little window, and he jumps through it. You can see why the Chiefs are so high on him, just his playmaking ability when he gets in the open field. Had four catches for 75 yards and two touchdowns in the win at Denver last week. Now from the 21. Spencer Ware can't get away on the outside and is brought down by Devondre Campbell, the rookie linebacker out of Minnesota. Well, they're trying to get a block on him, but Campbell coming up. See more slate to get to him and has no leverage. Ware trying to bounce it to the outside, can't get away. You, were look you and I were looking at this Atlanta roster. What a tremendous amount of young talent they have and a lot of speed Dan Quinn you can definitely see his fingerprint on this roster with those first and second year players coming over from Seattle that blueprint that he put together in Seattle as defensive coordinator trying to do the same thing here on second and 11 going deep down this side of the field and off the hands of Chris Conley Conley down the sideline one-on-one -on -one with Jalen Collins that's a, that's a ball you've got to catch. Nicely placed by Alex Smith over the outside shoulder. Third and 11. Smith over the middle. He has his man. That is Albert Wilson and Wilson shaking tacklers and out across the 40-yard line for a first down. Well, that's a direct influence of Travis Kelsey coming underneath. Deion Jones is going to be in the middle of the field. You're going to see him attack up on Travis Kelsey, and that allows that window, that second window, to open up. And Alex Smith had the time 
to put it to Wilson. Albert Wilson, 21-yard pickup, getting some extra playing time because Jeremy Macklin is back in Kansas City. Roy injury prevented him from making the trip. So the first down at the 41. Smith rolls, throws, hits his man across midfield. Inside the 45 is Kelsey. And that's another first down to the 43. Well, and that was the personnel group once again. Ja Reed is the extra lineman in playing the right tight end spot, so they think that the run is going that way. Instead, with the misdirection and the bootleg, able to get that second window in between the linebackers to Travis Kelsey. These Chiefs averaging about 11 and a half yards per play on offense. They've had the costly penalties and the costly turnover. Spencer Ware. Inside the 40, and we get our first update from the guys in New York, JB and Boomer. Hey, Greg, this is the kind of weather you like. It's a winter wonderland, just like Greg likes. And as you can see, Aaron Rodgers breaks the pocket. He's going to find Randall Cobb right in the middle of the end zone. Who's going to do a snow angel? That's like JB at uh, Central Park when wintertime hits us here in New York. 7 0 Green Bay takes the lead. Greg, that snow angel would be much bigger than that, right? <laughs> Hey, Wonderland is such a nebulous term. Pass to the far side. Complete. Kelsey inside the 25, the 20, the 15, and out of bounds. Ricardo Allen finally wrestled him out. Well, one of the things Atlanta talked about was containing, knowing where Travis Kelsey was all the time. So far, Kelsey already already over 100 yards receiving or nearing 100 yards receiving. You see how good is he or how good he is with yards after catch, his ability to be elusive in the open field. Kelsey takes a breather. Where in the backfield, first down at the 12. They fake the pitch and give it to Ware, and he's going no place. It'll be second down as we come up on nine minutes to play in the first half. You can see they're continuing to try and find ways of misdirection with Tyreek Hill as you look at the numbers between Kelsey and Julio Jones. By the way, I have never made a snow angel in my life. <laughs> you just go out there and just lay down in the snow. Why would you do that? Oh, uh, you hate the cold. Oh. Charkandrick West in the backfield. They give it to Tyreek Hill, left side, and works his way to about the six-yard line. Well, the last play, they tried faking it to Tyreek Hill on the sweep to the right. They handed it off inside. That didn't go anywhere, so this time they decide to give it to Hill. Get around to the outside, see what he can do in the open field. Andy Reid trying to figure out what he can dial up. Coming up on eight minutes to play in the first half. Third and four. Quick pass to the near side. Spinning is Tyreek Hill. And let's see where they will spot the ball. Looks like at about the three and a half yard line. That's short of a first down. Once again, getting to the outside quickly. Tyreek Hill with, able to make the first defender miss with the spin move. And interesting call here for Andy Reid as he decides, or at least is given the appearance of going for it here on fourth down. Three tight ends on the field for the Chiefs. They're late coming to the line. The play clock is down to five. And we get a timeout called by Kansas City. We'll take this opportunity to remind you the Verizon Halftime Report. Coming up, JB and company for all the latest NFL scores and highlights coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. 
you know, it's funny, Alex Smith, because they were short on the play clock, really didn't even get a chance to see if he could get them to jump offside. Yeah, there was, there was no time there for him to let alone get set and call the play, try and give him a hard count. So smart decision by the Chiefs, call the timeout, get organized. And I would think Andy Reid's philosophy here is, look, if the Falcons are showing, they can put points on the board and go up and down the field pretty much at random. Yeah, you don't want to you don't want to settle for field goals. That was one of my keys. Is they got to be able to convert for touchdowns. It's going to be important here, if anything, to at least get the first down if you're Kansas City. They're going to go with three tight ends again, and Spencer Ware in the backfield. Need a yard for a first down. Smith rolls, throws, complete touchdown. Spencer Ware. His second of the game. You're going to see a great look at the three tight ends. Chiefs are going to go for one to tie it up as opposed to going for two. All three tight ends to the left are going to block down. That gives the appearance to the linebackers, the defensive line, the secondary. Everybody thinks it's going to be a run because of that blocking scheme. And then we're able to sneak out into the flat for the easy touchdown. It appeared that if Spencer Ware wasn't open, that he had another man open in the end zone behind him. Cairo Santos had one blocked earlier. This one is good. 7.05 to play in the first half. Spencer Ware with the catch and the touchdown. And we're tied in Atlanta. Spencer Ware with a three yard touchdown run in the first quarter and then a three yard touchdown catch here in the second. And we're tied at 13. Talked a lot coming into this game about the Atlanta offense, but the Kansas City offense is firing on all cylinders as well, other than the fumble on that second series. Only had the ball three times. The fumble at midfield in the, the middle of the two touchdown drives. Eric Weems is deep. And will not get a chance to run this one back as he takes it out of the end zone. So they'll start on the 25-yard line as we take another quick break. 7.05 to play in the first half in Atlanta. You know, NFL players support the causes they care about in hopes of making a positive change. Today's players proudly displaying the charitable causes they champion on their game day cleats. Discover their personal tributes at NFL.com slash my cause, my cleats. From the 25-yard line, the Falcons back on offense. And Ryan to throw? No. We have movement Full prior start, to the snap. Number 42, offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. That's the fullback, Patrick DeMarco. Here's a look at a couple of special cleats. Chiefs linebacker. Oh, let's see, that's Matt Ryan. Supports Children's Health Care of Atlanta. And Chiefs linebacker Derek Johnson defends Dream Foundation, providing opportunities for low-income and inner-city youth. Good causes. Very good causes. It's, it's nice the league is doing that, allowing the players to get the message out about their different causes. So from the 20, it's first and 15. And Ryan on the slant. And that is complete across the 25 to Mohamed Sanu. His first catch of the day. They'll mark him down at the 28, and it'll be third and about seven. Sanu coming from that right slot matched up against Nelson. Big size advantage there for the Falcons. I beg your pardon, second down and seven. That's what Atlanta did with its first three possessions today. Ryan. Out to the near side, Kevin Coleman. Coleman. And a penalty marker is thrown on the far side of the field. Coleman is out of bounds at about the 34-yard line, but let's check the flag. An eligible downfield on a pass, number 73, offense. 
Repeat second down. That's the right tackle, Ryan Schrader. Well, it's not like he held onto the ball a long time. Oh. But there he is. He's out on the pattern. Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. The screen's going away from him. Why he went downfield that way. So Atlanta now with a second and 12. Ryan up the middle now throws outside and that is complete and getting to the outside is Taylor Gabriel and Gabriel across the 30 to about uh, the 32 yard line be about three yards short of a first down close to a horse collar but no call made on it fans just got a look at it I would say that's a horse collar. <laughs> they changed the rule this year, so it's not just the, the shoulder pad, but it's the it's the nameplate jersey area if you pull in that area as well. So no flag thrown for that third and three. Ryan, that's complete for a first down across the 35 to Justin Hardy. Let's go down to Jamie. Gray in his second year as head coach, Dan Quinn has created a new standard of play here in Atlanta. He told us back in February he was disappointed with the team's 8-8 eight eight finish, so he did something a little unconventional. For a week in the offseason training, he brought in a group of Navy SEALs. Matt Ryan told us there were absolutely no X's and O's during this week of training, something he has never done before. But really, Dan Quinn needed team chemistry to come back into this locker room. Matt Ryan said on the best teams he's been on, those are player-led teams. And this Navy SEALs experience brought that back to the Falcons. The team created a new document that they all signed called the standard. It's a word that's all over the Falcons facility. And Dan Quinn is proud of how this team has come together. Yeah, and he admitted, Jamie, thank you, that he, that he really wasn't he really wasn't sure how it was going to turn out, but he thought he would try it, and, and so far, so good. Yeah, it went over really well. The players that we all talked with, it, it, uh, you know, they said how much they got out of it, and, and Dan Quinn was happy with the way, uh, the way they all responded from it. Freeman across the 40 to about the 42 and a half yard line. He also noted, Greg, that the coaches did it as well. The coaches just didn't do it at the same time as the players. They went through their own uh, their own boot camp. We just get all energized just listening to Gus to, to Dan <laughs> Quinn talk. Jake Matthews, left tackle, taking a knee on his way to the sideline. He's uh, he's hurting right now. So we'll take a break due to that injury and come back. It'll be third and five for the Falcons. All right, here's Matthews here. He's going to get stepped on, but keep an eye on Justin Houston's right leg. It appears that he steps back and steps on the back leg of Matthews right there. And you see him hop and go down at that point. He's being worked on on the sideline. Tom Compton has replaced him at left tackle on third and five. Ryan hit as he throws, and it's incomplete to the far side of the field. Intended for Julio Jones, covered by Marcus Peters. And it was Dontari Poe coming in on the quarterback, as you saw Jake Matthews getting worked on on the sideline. Well, and Julio Jones talked to us about Marcus Peters. He said, you know, he's a guy that likes to look back at the quarterback. That's why he has so much success with interceptions. He likes to read the quarterbacks, and he realizes there on that throw, Julio Jones had to become the defender and not allow that interception to take place. First punt of the day for either side. Matt Bozier kicking it away. Tyreek Hill is deep. Tyreek Hill, the NFL's number one in punt return yards. And he makes the catch at about the 11 yard line. Chancy catch by Hill. 317 to play in the first half. We're tied at 13. Back in Atlanta, 317 to play in the first half. 
Week 13, we remind you, continues later today on Fox and tonight with Sunday Night Football on NBC and tune in tomorrow for Monday Night Football on ESPN. Alex Smith completing eight of his first ten passes for 139 yards and a touchdown, and he starts at his own 11-yard line. Kansas City with two timeouts remaining. Atlanta with all three of theirs. Smith with time over the middle, and a catch is made by Spencer Ware. Gets away from the tackler and out to about the 25-yard line. You can see this play developing. Alex Smith comes out and he looks to his left or right, but knows he has the crossing route on the backside by Ware. Trying to keep those eyes to the wide side of the field, knowing where he was going to go with the football, and then Ware doing the rest, breaking away from the tackle. What a great job, Spencer Ware, just catching the throw with a man all over him. Ware to the sideline, Char Kendrick West into the backfield. First down now at the 25. Give it to West, and West will lose a yard. Let's go to Jamie. Greg, during that last series, we saw left tackle Jake Matthews go off to the sideline. Right now, he's putting a sleeve on his left knee. The team is telling us he's questionable to return, but he's been down in his stands. His helmet is on, so it looks like he's trying to get back in. All right, Jamie, thank you. By the way, our congratulations to Jamie on her birthday yesterday. What is she, 58, 59? <laughs> <laughs> Happy 28th birthday to Jamie Erdahl. Two minutes to play here in the first half in the Georgia Dome. We're back right after this. Welcome back, everyone. A little oddity out on the field. Yeah, backup offensive lineman Ben Garland in at nose guard, sheds the block and comes up with the tackle. At the commercial break, we were up here trying to figure out, was that really Garland that was in there at uh, a defensive line? So impressive play. Went in for one play, made the play, and back on the sideline. Two minutes to play, second and ten, and Smith to throw. Threw that one away. Kelsey was covered on the near side of the field. It'll be third and ten. Good coverage sack that time by the Falcons. Nowhere for Alex Smith to go with the football. And we have a penalty marker down. Here's Walt Coleman. Pass interference, number 84, offense, 10 yard penalty, second down. What do you think the word penalties might come out of Andy Reid's mouth at halftime? Yeah, he's not going to be real happy with that. Demetrius Harris just trying to run a pick for Travis Kelsey. He's going over the top and Kelsey coming underneath. And Second and 20. <laughs> 95 yards in penalty so far today. I would think the Chiefs just run a draw or a screen here, trying to get some of this yardage back. They're going to throw it over the middle. Breaking away, and a tackle is Demetrius Harris, and he's out across the 20 to about the 21 yard line. Demetrius Harris, the six foot seven, 230. Well, this is where you have to be delicate if you're the Chiefs. What do you do? Do you try and keep the clock running here and not give the Falcons time to get the ball back? The Falcons are hanging on to all three of their timeouts, not calling one here. Clock continues to move. A minute 25 to play. Third and 14. Look, the defense is all lined up. That's the first down line back there. You can see the defense, all the players back by that first down marker. Eight Falcons deep in the secondary, and a timeout is called. Kansas City uses its second and stops the clock with 1.07 to play. Andy Reid looking at a tough third and 14 call after this. Attendance included running backs Charkandrick West and Niall Davis, as well as offensive lineman Brian Witzman. Big third and 14 here. Remember, Atlanta has all three of its timeouts remaining. See all the defenders dropping out again, getting back down by that first down marker. Quick 
pass to the far side. That is complete. This is Albert Wilson, and Wilson can't get much of anything. And Dan Quinn called a quick timeout. He's running on the field to get the officials' attention. They have one minute remaining and two timeouts left there. Dustin Cole puts such a kick it away for Atlanta, and Eric Weems back at his own 20-yard line. High floater. And he's at the 25, hit immediately, and goes down. Weems hit several times. And he'll be marked down at the 25-yard line coming up. The Verizon Halftime Report. JB and the guys back in New York with all the latest NFL scores and highlights. All coming up on the Verizon Halftime Report. So Matt Ryan will see what he can do with 48 seconds on the clock and two timeouts. Well, you can still utilize the entire field with those two timeouts, and it's not that much of a push for the Falcons. They've been going hurry up most of the game. Now this will be a little bit different tempo, the two-minute tempo compared to a no-huddle tempo. He has Freeman in the backfield with him. Ryan throwing intercepted in the middle of the field by Eric Berry. Berry to the 20, the 10, the 5, touchdown Kansas City. And that's how Kansas City has played the entire season. Very opportunistic defense leading the league in takeaways. Eric Berry baiting Matt Ryan into thinking there's an opening there in the middle of the field. Berry is really just playing a robber in the middle of the field. Had no assignment. The Chiefs with their sixth return touchdown this season. Didn't step out of bounds. Eric Berry returned one 42 yards at Carolina earlier this season. Santos for the extra point. Up and good. You see Barry just playing a robber in the middle of the field. He jumps over the top of Gabriel and able to get that interception. You quarterbacks have all your <laughs> nicknames for the defensive backs, and none of them are flattering. <laughs> And Eric Berry takes that football right over to his mom. Special moment for him from Georgia, playing in front of a lot of family and friends. It's eight games in a row with at least one takeaway, and this is a big one. Comes with just over half a minute to play in the first half. Well, nothing really changes for the Falcons right now. They still got some time with those two timeouts. See what kind of return they get, if any. If it goes in the end zone, do you just take the knee and save as much time as possible, or do you try getting a big return out of it? I'd rather have the time. If I'm Matt Ryan, I'd tell him to take the knee, put on the 25, give me the time. And that's what Matt Ryan will get ball will not come out of the end zone and Atlanta will start at the 25 yard line we talked about the Chiefs and how they go about business this is exactly the way they do it Trent look at this 27th in total offense 28th in total defense but right there getting the points off of turnovers they did it a week ago getting a big return in the kicking game but then also the safety don't you feel like that's kind of playing with fire, though? You know, you live by the sword, die by the sword. <laughs> they've, they've played that way all year. That's that's a, a Bob Sutton defense is that that bend don't break. They give up a lot of yards, but able to create turnovers. Ryan will set up the screen. Devontae Freeman. And Freeman with some running room across the 35. That is a first down out to about the 38-yard line. They hustle to the line. Clock continues to move. Coming up on 20 seconds remaining in the first half. Trying to save those timeouts, get everybody up there with a screenplay. You already have the lineman down the field. 
Ryan, sideline pass and almost picked on the far side by Daniel Sorensen. Well, Chris Jones putting the pressure on Matt Ryan, not able to step into that throw. You throw a lazy floater out to the flat. Matt Ryan fortunate that one wasn't another pick six. Pass intended for the rookie tight end Austin Hooper. Second and 10 and 13 seconds on the clock. So he'll just head for the sideline and run it out of bounds at midfield with six seconds to play. So Ryan is now within Hail Mary range. Well, and now you have to start thinking with that timeout, if you, if you complete the ball in bounds, it's going to have to happen quick. Get down right away. Give yourself up. Call the timeout. Or as you said, you got to launch it for the end zone. And Well, I just wonder how much the odds bend back against you because the defense knows it too. Right. Especially with the, with the limited time, you know, it, it, it's you're kind of stuck on what you can do, what your options are. And we get a whistle. And Kansas City used a timeout. It's third. A reminder for you, Tuesday, if you think Dr. Jason Bull is trouble, wait till you meet his ex-wife. Michael Weatherly stars in TV's number one new show, Bull. New episode Tuesday after NCIS, only CBS. It almost looked like the way they were motioning Julio Jones to the inside, that they were going to have him come in and, and almost do an out route. Have Gabriel go up the field, have Julio Jones come on an out route, try and get a pick up, you know, six, eight, ten yards over the ball, get down right away, call the timeout, and, and maybe attempt the long field goal. Maybe that's why Kansas City called the timeout. They saw some of those uh, formational things that would give that away. Well, keep in mind, Atlanta still has two timeouts remaining. Will they try to use one here or take them to the locker room with them? Quick pass over the middle, complete. Down to the 41, and timeout is called. Taylor Gabriel with the catch, and there's two seconds on the clock. Gabriel will be out to the left. Matt Quick. Bryant is going to come onto the field. He has a long of 53 this season. This will be 59. And we saw him launching them from about 58 yards out. Yeah, in pregame he was hitting 58. He has the leg to do it. You have to remember, though, to make it that far, you're going to have to have a lower trajectory. So keep an eye on the inside part of the, the line for the Chiefs. Tyreek Hill is back, and KC gets a shot at running it back on a miss. From 59 yards, Bryant getting it away. Woo. How about that? Well, that brought some life back into this dome. Matt Bryant from 59 yards out. Straight enough, long enough. Comes into the game, the NFL's leading scorer. And Dan Quinn says, you betcha. At the end of the first half, 20 to 16. Chiefs, we're back with the, back with the Verizon Halftime Report after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. We're back in Atlanta getting set for the start of the second half. 20-16, Kansas City in the league. Greg Gumbel along with Trent Green. 
first half had just about everything you could want, but we're not coaches. <laughs> what are the coaches looking for? Well, that's the adjustments you have to make. You look at the offense of the Kansas City Chiefs, what they've been able to do is they've mixed it up really well. So I think if you're Atlanta, you have to bring more pressure and get them out of that rhythm. For the Atlanta Falcons, I think they're struggling some on offense. I think that's hard to say against an Atlanta Falcons team that has done so well offensively. But right now, the Chiefs are doing a lot of things well on defense, keeping them from that type of rhythm that we were talking about. As you take a look at the first half stats, you can tell it had a little bit of everything. And uh, maybe a little more defense would be required for, for, for the coaches' sake. Kansas City with the lead and going to get their hands on the football first. Well, it's the points off of turnovers there. You see each team has a turnover. The Chiefs, when they had their fumble, Alex Smith on the sack fumble, they, they were only able to get a field goal out of that, Atlanta was, whereas the pick six by Eric Berry is the point difference. I want to remind you, you can follow your favorite team all season long. Go to iTunes.com slash NFL. Got a, they've got a chore ahead of them if they're going to live up to what they did in the first half here in Atlanta. 232 total yards for the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, we came into the game talking about Matt Ryan and the type of year he's having. Alex Smith, though, 11 of 13 for 168 yards, one touchdown, no interception, put together an impressive first half. Here's the Anthony Thomas coming up the sideline, has running room, and is pushed out of bounds just shy of the 40-yard line. Let's go down to Jamie. Greg, thanks. I caught Dan Quinn coming out of the locker room. He said first quarter offensively very happy, completely opposite about the team's defense, but he felt like they settled in as they went on. I asked both coaches how they felt about this pace of play. Dan Quinn is fine with it. Andy Reid, he said, I'm okay with it today. Now, when that interception happened in at the end of that second half, I got to tell you, that was a spark that the Chiefs sideline needed. Eric Berry and Mar Marcus Peters could not have been more pumped up, so watch for that energy. Yeah, I'd agree with you. Jamie, that, that, that Kansas City team could not have been as sky high as the Atlanta Falcons were up until that interception. Spencer Ware wrapped up back at his own 31-yard line. And they'll mark him forward at the 32, but he lost a couple on the play. Phillip Wheeler making the tackle. Well, you can see there must have been a pretty aggressive halftime speech by Dan Quinn and his staff because this defense came out there on first down and really brought the pressure. Got into the backfield, big tackle for loss. Second and 14. Oh. Alex Smith has the field spread, quick pass to the near side, and that's where, and where, to about the 38. Travis Kelsey who had himself a good first half. Yeah, put, to, put himself together. A, a couple nice throws down the sideline this time. Kelsey able to bring it in. Steps out of bounds around the three-yard line. This time climbing the ladder to go up and get the high throw. It's yards after catch as we see on this final reception here. Has been impressive the entire game. You know, back in New York, we wonder how Tony Gonzalez feels watching his <laughs> two ex-teams go head-to-head. -head. Oh, I'm sure he's very invested watching this game. Third and eight. Alex Smith going to go far sideline. That is complete, but short of the first down. Tyreek Hill makes the catch. And Robert Alford bumped him out. Here's Tony G's numbers. 12 years with Kansas City, another five with Atlanta. Part of those 12 seasons he had you throw him to him. And there's a, a trivia question right there. So Matt Ryan has 35 to him. I had 34 to him. I didn't know that. And then uh, until we brought up these numbers. So Meanwhile, on fourth and one, Alex Smith to the line. And we get a timeout called by Atlanta. So that'll give both sides time to think about this. I think Andy Reid trying, Andy Reid trying to uh, maybe make a little statement at the start of the second half here. We'll be back. Well, Atlanta used the timeout. Andy Reid thought about it and has sent the punting unit on. And Eric Williams is deep for Dustin Colquitt's kick. 
Well, I think this is the right decision. Oh, there goes the fake. fake. <laughs> and right up the middle, Albert Wilson. Wilson to the 10, the 5, touchdown. What a gutsy call by Andy Reid and Dave Tobe, his special teams coordinator. Well, he fought better of it all right, didn't he? When they lined up to go for it on fourth down in their own territory to start off the second half, as you see Wilson just take it right up the middle. Wilson being the short back or the protector, just a direct snap to him. 55 yards. Gutsy call by Andy Reid to start the second half. Santos for the extra point. And it is good. And with 12.52 to play, Kansas City stretches its lead now to 27 to 16 as we take another look. Which is going to be a direct snap right here. And he's going to take it right up the middle. Watch the blocking up front. He doesn't get touched until by Weems around the 30-yard line. You know, Trent, that's facilitated by the rule that prevents a guy from lining up directly over the center because that looked like a wide open roadway right up the middle. They sealed that off. It was a great decision. <laughs> I don't even think he had a smile there, did he? <laughs> There's Dave Tobe, special teams coordinator for the Chiefs. You, know, you wonder sometimes, you, you know that special teams practice the heck out of stuff like that and you rarely get a chance to use it. Rarely, let alone in your own side of the field uh, to start off the second half. You've got a four-point lead. If it doesn't work, you all of a sudden give the Falcons field position in, in a tight ball game. So, very timely call and worked out very well for the Chiefs. Albert Wilson, a wide receiver, his first career rushing touchdown, and that 55-yard play, the longest play of the year for the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, and you wonder if some of this aggressiveness by Andy Reid is because he knows he has to score points. He knows this Atlanta offense can get on the field and put a lot of points on the board. This will be a touchback. And they'll start on the 25-yard line. Fourth down conversions have been good for Kansas City. Last two touchdowns have been on fourth down. This one, the fake punt. We just saw the previous one. The roll out and flip to the flat to where? A couple of gutsy calls by Andy Reid and his staff. Both paid off right now. You know, it makes sense that the most successful, call it if you want a trick play, are the ones that are the most unexpected. That's exactly right. That's, you know, you, you try and catch a defense, or in this case a special teams, uh, against something that you don't normally do or with something that you don't normally do. So now Matt Ryan, play fake, pulls it down and throws it away. It'll be second and ten. He's trying to get Julio Jones in the right slot. Ron Parker was sitting on the route because he had help over the top with the safety. Boy, the Chiefs have taken the air out of this building, which was very noisy. Well, it's been a high-flying offense the entire season. Chiefs, though, four and two on the road this year, winning their last four games on the road, including that exciting one last week in Denver. Atlanta with 18 first half first downs, a season high. This is Freeman, and Freeman with running room, dodging tackles, and almost to the 40-yard line before he's brought down. They'll mark him down to the 39, but that's an Atlanta first down. Rameek Wilson, Marcus Peters with the tackle. Well, the Falcons aren't going to be real happy with the effort of Muhammad Sanu on the outside. He's standing there watching the, the corner go up and make the tackle, watching Marcus Peters get involved in the tackle. Sanu thinking that the ball's not going to bounce out to him. Had he made a block, it would have been an even bigger game down the sideline. On the slant once again. This is Sanu. And Sanu inside the Kansas City 45 for another first down. So Atlanta picking up yardage in chunks. Well, and this is why, and this is probably why Andy Reid has been making the decisions he's made. He's, he's being aggressive with his play calling and going for it on fourth down because with this quick tempo that the Falcons can run, they can get points in a hurry. This is Freeman. And Freeman going to lose yardage this time, courtesy of Kendall Reyes. 
Well, that's what any defense wants to do. They want to stretch the run and make it bounce and bounce and bounce. And then ultimately he tries to bounce and go back the other way, does Freeman. So make that stretch and let the other defenders rally and make the tackle. It's like a loss of about five. And it'll be second and 15, the line of scrimmage now, the Kansas City 48. Four nine. Four nine. Four nine. Coleman. Coleman with running room inside the 40 to the 39 yard line and this is where the Falcons have had the most success those quick hitters in the inside part of the line as a part as opposed to the ones that are stretching they've had some success with the stretch when you're able to bounce it and get it to the outside but they've been more effective with the inside runs pickup of eight on that play gives Matt Ryan a third and seven that's 20 first downs for the Atlanta Falcons today. Ryan going to go deep. Got his man at about the 20-yard line, and that's Julio Jones. First down. Did you notice that, Greg? Did you notice the way he threw that football? The pocket was collapsing around him, and Matt Ryan almost had to jump to throw that football. Watch as he's standing in the pocket. He goes to release this, and Tom Bali is right there. He jumps in the air to get that left foot off the ground so it isn't planted when he takes the hit. Outside puts him in a spot where only Jones can catch it. Steven Nelson covering on the play. First down. Ryan under pressure just got it away and incomplete inside the 10-yard line. I'm not so sure, Greg, that Tom Mahali didn't have an effect on that throw. You saw it, you saw it kind of die at the feet. Watch Tom will be the right side of our screen here. See if he gets a hand on that ball that causes it to go down. You can see the spin or the rotation on the football didn't appear that he got a hand on the ball, but I know as a quarterback you can feel that sometimes and it affects the throw. You played with Tom. Yes, yes, he's, one, you, he's, he's one of the guys left. Can yeah. you hear him coming? <laughs> yes, you can. Second and ten. Ryan, and over the middle and incomplete, intended for Coleman out of the backfield. Let's get an update from the guys in New York once again. J.B. and Boomer. Bill Cowher said Houston was one play away. Hey, it's fourth and one right here. Brock Oswald is going to find Ryan Griffin. For six yards and a touchdown score, they tie it up. Here's a little Lambeau leap by a Texans player, Ryan Griffin, 7-7. Greg, Trent, and Jamie. All right, guys, thank you. That last play, Greg, I don't know how Alex Mack didn't get called for offensive line downfield. He was actually in front of where Coleman tried catching the ball. The two of them ran. I was like, why are there so many bodies there? And it ended up being Alex Mack. So officials missed one on that. Third and ten. With time, throwing the near side of the field, complete the 10-yard line, Taylor Gabriel. And that's very close to a first down, but not quite there. And now decision time for Dan Quinn. I don't think there's much decision here. I think that they've been struggling to get points. The fact that they've only got 16, they're down 11. They're going to go for this on fourth down. Fourth and one at the 10. One yard for a first down, 10 for a touchdown. And I know you're thinking there's a lot of time left in the game. Why are you doing this at this point in time? But the way the Chiefs have been moving the football, I like this decision. Ryan Roll pulls it down, throws, it is incomplete inside the 10-yard line. Freeman wants a flag. There is no flag forthcoming. Frank Zombo was covering. Well, that's almost identical to the play that the Chiefs ran on the goal line, and Alex Smith threw the touchdown pass to where the Chiefs were ready for it defensively. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Southwest. Yes to low fares with nothing to hide. That's transparency. Amazon Prime. Get free two-day shipping on millions of items. And by the Home Depot. More saving, more doing.
back at the Georgia Dome, Kansas City, with the fourth down stand, and here's that play. Keep an eye on Frank Zombo. You're, you're wondering why Devontae Freeman was yelling for the officials. Watch as he grabs him, and then he lets him go right before the, the ball comes out. The official is standing right there, but doesn't throw the flag. Alex Smith on the move, throws, and that's complete. This is Kelsey. Kelsey gets a good rock. 25, out to the 30-yard line. A first down for Kansas City. Well, to be honest with you, Greg, I thought Alex Smith was going to throw it to Chris Conley. He was the second receiver back behind. I thought he was going to lay it up over the top. Watch Conley. He'll be coming from the left side of the screen. If he just lays it to that open window out to the sideline, I thought that was where he was going to go with the football. But knowing Travis Kelsey and the yards he gets after catch, Demetrius Harris with the block. Great block. 118 yards receiving for Travis Kelsey. This is where. Tripped up and knocked down at the 27-yard line. Brian Poole making the play. NFL fans, order your holiday gifts from NFLshop.com today. Save 25% off at the official store of the NFL, NFLshop.com. Kelsey turned in a heck of a game at Denver last week with eight catches for 101. And having a really, really, really decent day today <laughs> with five for 118. This is where. And Deion Jones, the rookie middle linebacker, making the stop there as we have a penalty marker down. Holding, number 76, offense, the penalties have climbed, third down. That's Laurent Duvernay-Tardif, the right guard. He pulls on the block, and you can see he just wraps him up. You know, is that any more of a hold than everything else you see <laughs> all day, every Sunday? That may have been some acting on that as well. We, we showed some acting that, uh, that Matt Ryan had earlier. That looked like a little acting there as well. Here's a third and ten now for Alex Smith. <laughs> Smith throwing, complete. Tyreek Hill, kill up the middle into Atlanta territory and down at the 46-yard line. Keanu Neal made the saving tackle. Well, Greg, it's just the burst of speed. You know, you play off of him because you're worried about him running past you. This is short of the first down. There's two defenders there. But Hill's speed, his acceleration is second to none in the National Football League. 25-yard pickup and a new set of downs for the Chiefs. Now in Atlanta territory. Smith on first down right over the middle and that is complete and there is Travis Kelsey since since tight ends appear to be the order of the day our Tony Gonzalez on the line with us from New York how are you feeling about these two teams going head to head Tony hey guys how are you you know what I am this is I'm conflicted obviously people keep asking me who you're rooting for for this game uh, and I'm rooting for both of them I did pick Kansas City to win the game but you know two great uh, great defense a great offense uh, in Atlanta Falcons. I'm having a lot of fun watching this game. And what do you think of the performance of Travis Kelsey so far today? I tell you, Trey, he is, uh, in my opinion, the best tight end in the league when he has the ball in his hands. His yak yard, his yards after catch, is second to none in the NFL amongst tight ends. He's a lot of fun to watch after he gets the ball in his hands. Tony, I wonder if your ears were burning on Friday because you were a hot topic of discussion between Trent Green and Matt Ryan. <laughs> we, we, were, we were having a discussion about where you like the footballs, and, and it's, it's a consensus that you like to front the ball and you like to look it in. I was going to say, and where he doesn't <laughs> like the ball. And where I, I remember when, Trent, you first came in and you threw those timing balls, and I went back to you and I said, Trent, you can't throw me the ball like that because, first of all, I'm not very good at it. And second of all, you got to give me a chance just to go jump up and get it. And you did it beautifully. We, I think we did pretty well together. <laughs> yeah, we, we adjusted real quick on that. I, I was smart enough to adjust real quick. <laughs> yeah. Holding, number 72, offense, 10-yard penalty. 
still third down. So the Chiefs get hit with a holding penalty. Left tackle Eric Fisher. You know, we're, you know, of course, Tony, you'd be conflicted because you had such great careers in both cities, but obviously most of your memories uh, stem from your days in Kansas City. Yes, yes, and, and some, you know, I, I was in the pregame show. We did a little, little, little segment on it, and I became a man out there. It wasn't just about being on the football field. It was off the field, growing up as a player uh, on and off the field. Such great memories out there in Kansas City. I wish we could have done a little bit better as far as getting to a Super Bowl and winning it. Uh, that never happened, of course, but at the same time, I really enjoyed my time out there being a Kansas City Chief. And I know you've told me privately, Tony, Trent throws a bad ball, be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Trent throws Greg, a Greg beautiful ball. Greg set you ball. up. Greg <laughs> Look at set that you right up. There. Look at Trent Green. Uh, no, Trent threw a big, beautiful ball. Uh, <laughs> and especially in the fourth quarter, I could always count on Trent to find me. He was, he was great. You know, I, I learned quick. I learned quick. I, I knew where to go with the football and, and the way you like to catch the football. So I was smart enough to figure that out in a hurry. I appreciate it, buddy. <laughs> hey, Tony, thank you for joining us. We appreciate it. We're thinking of you here. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, guys. Third and 12 for the Chiefs. And there's some instant movement by Eric Fisher. False start, number 72, offense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. So it turns that third and 12 into a third and 17. Kansas City now hit with 110 penalty yards on the day. That's tough to overcome. You know, and, and they've really made some adjustments here in the second half. You consider how many penalties and how many penalty yards. I guarantee that's the first thing Andy Reid said at halftime. He's like, listen, we have the lead, but we got to stop hurting ourselves with the penalty yards and for the most part they've done that here in the second half that's going to hurt them though bumping them back to third and 17. and we have a falcon in the backfield that's quite freeney freeney's saying that fisher fletched again or, or flinched again Unimpeded for the quarterback, number 93, defense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. He didn't flinch. Dwight just said he flinched. <laughs> well, let's see. We'll get, we'll get a chance to look at it. Oh, yeah. You can see that left knee move. Lean forward. Freeney, <laughs> author of 122 and a half career sacks in his 14-year career. Well, that was a big miss by the officials because Fisher definitely moved on that. Freeney was right, but not right with the on-the-field call. So. so they get the five yards back. It's third and 12. Coming up on four minutes to play here in the third. Smith, short pass. This is Kelsey, and Kelsey upended at the 45-yard line. About nine yards shy of a first down. Brady Jarrett, the second-year defensive tackle out of Clemson. Well, they're just trying to run that tight end screen where Kelsey was going to block first and then peel off, but Freeney recognizing it, hanging on to him there for a while. So Cole quit to kick it away, maybe. <laughs> right. And that, well, and that was a big stop because by keeping him short, they can't try the long field goal. Weems going to let this one sail over his head. Bounces inside the five-yard line and into the end zone for the touchback. Three minutes, nine seconds to play in the third quarter. Matt Ryan and the Falcons on offense after this. 3.09 to play here in the third quarter. And Matt Ryan goes back to work on offense and working on a 51st consecutive game of 200 or more yards. He has 195 on the day. Unbelievable streak there, 50 consecutive games you can see the most in the NFL. Ryan brought it down as he went down back at the 13-yard line. Tamba Ali. Well, Tamba's been close a couple times here in the third quarter. Lucky he didn't lose the ball, Matt Ryan, as he goes to throw. Very easily, that ball could have popped out. You know, about that streak, Trent, 
he's the, he's the first NFL quarterback, the only NFL quarterback, that had 50 games in a row with 200 or more yards. I'm just shocked that other quarterbacks haven't accomplished that. You would think, you know, when you start talking about all the greats that played this game, Dan Fouts was on there, but he, he was the record holder prior. The screen for Coleman, and there's a penalty marker down. Well, Coleman's been a busy man today. Illegal use of hands, hands to the face, defense. Five-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's another Kansas City penalty, and this one costs them a first down. Well, that's, that's a killer, Greg. You're right, 11th penalty on the day as about, we take a look at the streaks. Yeah, how about these streaks? Joe DiMaggio's 56 games. And Wilt the Stilt. 126 games scoring 20 or more. And Wayne Gretzky, 51 straight games with a point. And Matt Ryan working on consecutive game number 51. On first down, Ryan, play fake, and throw. And there's his 200 plus for the day. Julio Jones hauling it in. That one's good for 21 yards and a first down. Leo Jones matched up against Nelson on the outside, a little in and out. We used to call that a seven shake, Greg. You're nowhere impressed. No, I, I, <laughs> give me a shake route, right? You, good Get enough. the DB going the other way. You can call it whatever you want, Terry. Go ahead. <laughs> Minute and a half to play in the third. And we get another flag. And this one will go against Atlanta. False start for 16. Offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Justin Hardy busted on the early move. See down here at the bottom of the screen? Like how we did the little shoulder shimmy after he moved. He was trying to sell it like, oh, I tried doing that, you know? I had an itch. <laughs> so first and 15. Ryan with time, near side of the field, diving for the ball is Julio Jones. Oh, what a catch. They're going to play a trail technique. Peter, Marcus Peters is going to play a trail technique because he knows he has Ron Parker over the top. He has help. That's a tough throw to make when you have to lay it up over the top and an even better catch by Julio Jones. This is Kevin Coleman for Julio Jones. That's seven games of 100 or more yards receiving this season. Or this season, a seven catches for 113 today. We're in the last 25 seconds of the third quarter. Coleman. Hit at the 40, forward to the 38. Ramik Wilson had a hold of him, and that looks like that might be the last play here in the third quarter. They're going to a hurry up here. I don't think they're going to hurry it up in time. He runs out of time before they can get the snap away, so the fourth quarter will begin with a third and two. That's the end of three. Kansas City leaning at 27-16. Back to Atlanta after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Back in Atlanta for the start of the fourth quarter. Our producer Jim Rickoff, our director Suzanne Smith, Greg Gumbel, Trent Green, and Jamie Erdahl with Kansas City holding a 27-16 lead. Here are the Falcons with a third and two at the Chiefs' 38-yard line. Freeman inside the 35 to the 34 and a first down. Those are Matt Ryan now at 51 consecutive games. And the, the, the thing I was saying before about it's almost a standard for quarterbacks these days. 200 yards throwing. Freeman again. 30, 25, and down to the 21-yard line. 
Yeah, today's game, it's, it's a much different game. It, you know, a 300-yard game or a 400-yard game isn't, isn't that unheard of, but to have that consecutive streak the way that Matt Ryan's put together now. And, you know, you could have taken my money if I, I would have <laughs> bet Peyton Manning had, had to have had at least that many consecutive games over the 200-yard mark. At yes, some point. right. Here's Freeman again. And Freeman brought to a halt at about the 20. We go down to Jamie. Greg, the Falcons offensive line has been without left tackle Jake Matthews since four minutes to go in the first half. At first, the team ruled him questionable to return with a left knee injury. However, now they're telling me he's downgraded to out, and Tom Compton has replaced him on that left side. All right, Jamie, thank you, Tom Compton, the fourth-year tackle out of South Dakota. Well, Compton's doing a heck of a job with the run blocking. You think the last two runs have gone off that left side. Big gains to that side. Now he's got his hands full with Tom Ali, who's been able to put some pressure on Ryan here in the second half, but he's doing a good job run blocking. This is Coleman. Spun down at about the 20-yard line. Derek Johnson making the stop. A reminder, coming up, the Subway postgame show. JB and the guys back in New York for all the latest NFL scores and highlights, all coming up on the Subway postgame show. Well, that was Derek Johnson that made the tackle. You're right, Greg, but D Ford's the one that caused that to happen. He stayed home on the backside. He missed last week because of injury, now back out on the field for this game. He's really had his presence felt not only in the run game like that last play, but getting the ball or getting that pass rush upfield. Atlanta four times in the red zone today. One touchdown to show for it. Third and nine. And there's penalty markers flying. And that looked like D. Ford on the far side. Unimpeded for the quarterback, number 55, defense. Five-yard penalty, still third down. Do I take the blame for that? Is, is that my fault for praising him? And then the very next play, he decides he decides to jump off. Is that the, uh, the announcer curse? <laughs> That's 120 penalty yards Bob, for Kansas City. Yeah, Bob Sutton, the defensive coordinator, not real happy with that. Uh, That's the most assessed against the Chiefs team since 2011. Third and four. Ryan going to throw this side of the field. Inside the five, Taylor Gabriel has it at the one. It'll be first and goal. Gabriel's been a nice compliment these last few weeks, getting involved with the game more and more, more and more in the game plan every week. Coming into today, four straight games with a touchdown. Freeman in the backfield on first and goal. Freeman with the football to the end zone, touchdown. Trying to run the ball to the left, just not there. He's able to bounce it to the back side and get it into the end zone. He ran it to the right. He gave it to his right tackle, Ryan Schrader, who got the spike in the end zone. And they're looking for two points here on the conversion. Freeman in the backfield with Ryan. Ryan, the goal line incomplete, batted away. Derek Johnson covering Freeman at the goal line. Well, if you kick that ball, make it a four-point game, you have to get a touchdown anyway, so go for two, try and make it a field goal game. Instead, they come up short. 11.57 to play in the fourth. This was a heck of a game from the opening kick, and it has stayed that way. 11.57 to play in the fourth. The Chiefs' lead is at 5, 27-22. Lots of action by both offenses. Defenses creating turnovers. We've had some special teams plays. It's been, uh, been nonstop. Anthony Thomas going to get to return this one from the two. And 
hit hard at the 20. Lunges forward to about the 21. Eric Weems, the Atlanta special teamer, making the hit. And Alex Smith will be on next. Alex Smith on a roll. 14 straight passes completed. And the Falcon fans are alive and well. This is Spencer Ware opening on the right side and out across the 25 to the 26 yard line. You know, our whole crew congratulates my partner, Trent Green. Honored by the Big Ten with the Dungy Thompson Humanitarian Award yesterday. That award for success in areas of leadership and humanitarianism after Trent's academic and athletic career at Indiana University. I thought, I thought you were like being made emperor or something. <laughs> Second and five. Over the middle, that's complete. This is Tyreek Hill, and Hill, not much. Let's see what's happening in New York. JB, boomer. Did the snowflakes hide Jordy Nelson? I don't know, pretty good camouflage, JB. As things are heating up in the dome, they're heating up in Green Bay as well. 12 plays, 98 yards, capped off by that 32-yard touchdown pass from Aaron Rodgers. Packers take a lead, 14-7. Congrats to a character guy, Trent Green. Back to Greg Gumbel. You bet, JB. Thank you. Thank you, JB. I appreciate that. Alex Smith going to go deep down the sideline. It is incomplete. Chris Conley appeared to have his hands on it. He couldn't hold it. Well, and Conley had a step on, on the corner there. He was trying to get down the field against Collins, and Alex Smith just underthrew it. First incompletion here in a long time for Alex Smith since the first quarter. Tried coming back and catching it off his back there, but not able to bring it in. He completed 15 in a row. Second and ten. Dollar! Dollar! On the slant. Albert Wilson doesn't get very far. Kind of like ping-ponging in there. <laughs> he took a pretty good hit there. Able to protect the football. Ricardo Allen with the initial hit. You know, we have to share... <laughs> We have to share with the audience. Alex Smith took a pretty, pretty good shot at you. He <laughs> said Trent was yeah. receiving the humanitarian award at the Big Ten Championship, and Alex Smith said Trent's first time at a Big Ten Championship. <laughs> he had to get a little jab in there. Third and two. All in good fun. Here we go. <laughs> Smith pulls it down. Now throws down the sideline and wide open, and he missed him. Spencer Ware had nothing but green in front of him, and he missed it. Well, he initially had, Alex Smith initially has Travis Kelsey. Watch from the right. He comes and sits down over the ball. You'd have to hit it right on time. Spencer Ware just running a flat route out to the left. When he sees Alex Smith slide, he peels it up the sideline. Alex is mad at missing that one. On fourth and two, Colquitt. High and long. Weems will let it bounce inside the five and through the end zone for the touchback. 9.25 to play in the fourth. Oh, what might have been. Kind of an even quarterback battle with the uh, bottom line being the only difference. Alex Smith, a touchdown, no picks. Matt Ryan, no picks and a touchdown. Or an interception. Well, and it was a costly one, too, that Eric Berry interception for touchdown right at the end of the first half. Coleman. Coleman across the 25. 
A reminder, tonight, what does the Speaker of the House think he and President-elect Donald Trump will be able to get done for America? Find out from Paul Ryan only on 60 Minutes tonight. 7-yard pickup makes it 2nd and 3. Well, this is two plays in a row. We just saw Julio Jones. Two plays in a row, Julio Jones has been on the sidelines. Run it again with Coleman. Dodges a tackle in the backfield and makes his way across the 30 for a first down. Derek Johnson made the lunge and couldn't grab him. Great vision by Coleman. Derek Johnson read that, shot through the line, and had a chance for the tackle for loss, but Coleman with the quick evasion and picking up the first down. Julio Jones having a conversation with his head coach, Dan Cree. Coleman again. He'll be marked down at the 36-yard line. And Justin Houston and Derek Johnson making the tackle. Well, Greg, I don't, I don't want to speculate, but it, it's really odd that he's not in there. Julio Jones is the, the biggest playmaker that the Falcons have. And even if you are going to run the ball like the Falcons have done here the last three plays, get him on the field as a decoy to try and take some of the attention away from the run game. And Coleman again. And Coleman a yard short of a first down at the 40. He thinks he didn't touch the ground. The <laughs> officials say otherwise. So it'll be third and one. Well, Coleman's got the speed to, to take it the distance if he gets a crease. And Jones remains on the sideline. Almost like it has something to do with his legs. I see him going back. We've had a, a, a trying to keep my eye on him on the sideline. He's going back and forth a couple of times trying to push off. I don't, like I said, don't want to know if it's a hamstring, knee, ankle, something that he's, uh, he's not completely comfortable with as he's trying to get loosened up on the sideline. Matt Ryan was running out of time on the play clock and called timeout. When we come back, it'll be third and one. And by the way, Atlanta's down to one timeout remaining. The NFL on CBS is sponsored by Honda. Hurry in for great deals during Happy Honda Days. New York Life. With the right guidance, everyone can be good at life. And by Walmart. Find gifts, groceries, and more this season. Just under seven minutes to play here in the fourth. Julio Jones under 13 receiving yards. Everybody else for Atlanta, 88. And he is back on the field on third and one. Ryan fakes the pitch wide open over the middle. He has Tololo, Ravine Tololo inside the 20 to the 18 and a first down. Tololo's on the back side by himself. He's right here. He's going to leak out late, come up the field. Ryan fakes everything going that way. You'll see the fake toss, you roll, you half roll, and then all of a sudden Tololo leaks out to the outside. Just good for 42 yards. And by the way, Julio Jones has come back to the sideline. Freeman behind Ryan. Decided against the slant that time and kept it. And falls forward to about the 17-yard line. Oh, and if he would have just kept shuffling and shuffling and sliding out to the left. This was Jones. This was Jones on that long play by Toilolo. Looks more like a decoy on that side of the field. He's a heck of a weapon not to have at your disposal. Second and nine. Ryan batted up in the air and incomplete. Marcus Peters on the coverage. 
Well, now Sanu's limping off the field, so Sanu was the intended receiver. So Sanu comes off the field, and Julio Jones is back on. And you see Sanu limping on the sideline. Marcus Peters with five interceptions came into the week tied second most in the NFL. Jones now plank to the left, bottom of your screen. Ryan on the move, lots of room to run. 15, 10, out of bounds, short of the five yard line. It'll be first and goal. Good decision by Matt Ryan. You see him, he's trying to look out to his left as he escapes to the right. He has no receivers there. He's able to accelerate and get past the chasing Tom Bahali. That's a 12-yard pickup by the Atlanta quarterback. And Julio Jones, who clearly is not healthy, off the field once again. First and goal. We are down to four and a half minutes to play. Play fake into the end zone. Incomplete. Justin Hardy, the intended receiver. Officials took a good long look. Terrence Mitchell on the coverage. You see Hardy just going to run a slant. Mitchell gets away with the grab there, the back of the jersey. Lots of ball on the ground. And the fans are kind of fooling themselves into thinking it was a good catch. Second and goal. Ryan over the middle wide open, touchdown, Aldrick Robinson. That looked like just a miss in the Kansas City secondary. Eric Berry wasn't real happy. There was a miscommunication with the coverage. He was the safety over the top. See Berry in the back of the end zone. Thought he had inside help. Marcus Peters was underneath on the slot coverage, and he thought that Peters was going to continue back into that middle zone. Berry had no help on the inside. So they will go for two. Searching for the three-point lead. Ryan throwing, intercepted, picked off. This is Barry and Eric Barry going the other way, and nobody's going to catch him. Two on the board for the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh. What a change for the Atlanta Falcons. They take the lead. They decide to go for two and try and make it a three-point game. Eric Berry with a 37-yard interception earlier for a touchdown now brings this back for two. And the Chiefs, instead of being down, lead it by one. 4.32 to play in regulation. The Kansas City Chiefs Eric Berry intercepting a two-point conversion attempt and taking it back 99 yards. And instead of trailing, the Chiefs are on top by one, 29, 28. And what, who else other than Eric Berry? Huh? <laughs> and a hero not just in Kansas City, but all over the league for his courageous fight against cancer. Came back from that to play. The Anthony Thomas. Thomas still on his feet. Penalty marker is thrown as he comes up short of the 20-yard line. And this looks like this will be against another penalty against the Chiefs. Illegal block in the back, number 48 of the return team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. That penalty is on the rookie Terrence Smith.
Chiefs getting it started from their own eight yard line. 4.24 to play here in the fourth. This is Spencer Ware. Going nowhere, Devondre Campbell making the stop. Jamie. Greg, just to update on the other side of the ball for the Falcons, Julio Jones is in pain on the sideline. We saw him coming on and off during that last series. We think he was injured on this play as we're watching this replay go back and forth. I would like to say he's catering to his left foot at this point. He's not receiving a ton of treatment, nothing official from the team yet, but it certainly looks to be like that left foot. Also, Mohamed Sanu, this is the pitcher from the team. He's questionable to return with a groin injury, so some wide receiver issues for Atlanta. All right, Jamie, thank you. Alex Smith with time. Kelsey, Kelsey for a first down across the 20-yard line. So while Matt Ryan is missing a big weapon in Julio Jones, Alex Smith makes use of his big one in Travis Kelsey. Kelsey continues to shine today, and this is a huge first down for the Kansas City Chiefs, trying to get separation from their own goal line, not wanting to give the ball back to the Atlanta Falcons. This is a, a, a vital part of the offense. You talk about two-minute offense all the time. This is the four-minute offense where you're trying to use up the clock and not give the ball back. Kelsey, eight catches for a career-high 140 yards. Under three minutes to play. Where? No game. I want to remind you, you can get the CBS Sports app for inside access to breaking news and expert analysis of your favorite team. It has everything you need to stay close to the action. Download the CBS Sports app today. Time continues to move. Two and a half to play. Atlanta, remember, has only one timeout. Expect Kansas City to make a very conservative throw or to hand the ball off and keep the clock moving. Where? Across the 25 to about the 26 and Deion Jones. The rookie middle linebacker makes the tackle and that will take us to the two minute warning. Two minutes to play in one of the more unreal games of this season. 29, 28, Chiefs. Welcome back to Atlanta. Two minutes to play in the fourth quarter. The Chiefs hanging on to a one-point lead, 29 to 28. And welcome to those of you who just watched Baltimore snap Miami's winning streak, 38-6. Third and six here, and a big first down facing the Chiefs. On the slant, he's got his man. That is Albert Wilson. And that is a huge first down. Wilson lined up to Alex Smith's right in the slot, just running the slant. Accurate throw. First down, Kansas City. Atlanta only has one timeout left, and they just use it. One fifty-three on the clock. And Atlanta now out of timeouts. A reminder for you coming up, the Subway postgame show. JB and the guys back in New York for all the latest NFL scores and highlights. All coming up on the Subway postgame show. That is Ricardo Allen walking off the field. What a game this has been from the very start, Trent. It's been tremendous. From the first drive, both both teams going down and scoring on their first possessions. As we take a look at some of the stats for both teams. Albert Wilson had a 55-yard touchdown run on a fake punt. Well, Eric Berry had an interception return for a touchdown and then returned the two-point conversion attempt for the difference in this game right now. Well, think about the, think about the last two weeks for the Kansas City Chiefs. First, they beat Denver at Denver in overtime on a bank shot off the left upright. Now they come down to Atlanta, and on a failed two-point conversion, Eric Berry intercepts it, gets two points the other way. Instead of trailing, all of a sudden, they've got a lead. And with the clock running, let's see. 
Atlanta cannot stop the clock. And they'll take this down as far as they can go. Another knee for Alex Smith. So this one will get it down to right around 30 seconds. You'll have to snap it again, take a knee, and that'll be it. Actually, you don't even have to go all the way down to 30. As soon as it gets to 40, take the snap, take the knee, and it's done. This is what's on hand for Kansas City. Short week with Oakland. Thursday night game. And then home to Tennessee, home to Denver, and then finish on the road at San Diego. The Atlanta Falcons, this just tightens up the NFC South. What a game, though. What yeah. a game between those two guys. Tough loss for the Falcons. Right position. They had, they had the lead and then went for the two-point. Try and extend it to a field goal game. These Chiefs have won six consecutive December games. They've won 19 of their last 22 regular season games. Twenty-nine, twenty-eight is the final. Kansas City putting the pressure once again on the Oakland Raiders. And Atlanta now at seven and five and within shouting distance of the Tampa Bay Bucks. Once again, 29-28 Chiefs. It's the Subway Show postgame show coming up next for Trent and Jamie. For all of us here in Atlanta, Greg Gumbel saying so long from the Georgia Dome. You've been watching the NFL on CBS 2, James Brown in New York.